Okay, we're going to do a clinical brain death evaluation <clears throat> with the exception of the apnea test. We know that the patient doesn't have any uh, questions about a C-spine integrity. So the first thing we do is establish that the patient is comatose and unresponsive with loud auditory and then tactile stimulation. Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones, open your eyes! Mr. Jones, open your eyes! I like to give a vigorous shake side to side to see if we can awaken him. I'll do a sternal rub and then apply pressure on the cranium, usually at the supraorbital notch on both sides, and then at the temporomandibular joint on both sides. Those are painful areas for stimulation and should awaken a patient who's not in coma. So then we will open his eyes and see what they are doing at baseline. So his eyes are midline and conjugate. The pupils are mid position and appear fixed. I'll test a blink to visual threat. And there is no responsiveness. And we'll check his pupillary light reflex, shining a bright light in each eye separately. And you can swing back and forth as well. If there's any question regarding pupillary reactivity, I like to use a magnifying glass, which I always use in patients who are brain dead, to see if there's any even small pupillary reaction which would rule them out for brainstem areflexia and brain death. And there's no responsiveness with either of those. Next, I'll check a corneal reflex. I press on the cornea adjacent to the iris with some pressure, and there is no responsiveness to that. I'll check an oculocephalic reflex. Hold the eyes open, move the head quickly from side to side. There should be no movement of the eyes if the patient is brain dead. Should also be tested vertically, taking care not to extubate the patient with this maneuver. And there's no responsiveness to that either. Next we'll check the cold calorix or the ocular vestibular re reflex. We put the head of the bed up to 30 degrees, which he's at approximately right now, to get the proper orientation of the semicircular canals. You look in the ear to make sure that the external auditory canal is free of blood or cerumen or anything else that might be blocking it, and make sure that the tympanic membrane is intact, which it is. Obviously you check both ears, which I won't do. You put a chucks or some kind of absorbent material next to the patient's head and you have someone help to hold open the eyes. And we hold the eyes open and we're looking for movement for at least 60 seconds. There should be no movement with installation of the ice water. Okay, assume that 60 seconds have gone by and there has been no movement. Thank you. You wait five minutes before testing the other ear. I won't show you that at this time. Next you want to test to see if the patient has a gag or a cough. So testing a gag, I'll do some tugging on the ET tube to see if there's any response to that and I will poke in the posterior pharynx with a tongue blade to see if there's any response to that, and there is none. I'll test, a, a test him for a cough to deep bronchial suctioning. And there is no cough. I'll test for a jaw jerk reflex, which should not be present and is not. His extremities have been exposed the entire time to see if there's any movement to the noxious stimulation or anything that we've been doing. It's important that the patient's extremities be exposed. I'll give deep nail bed pressure. There should be no movement other than spinally mediated reflexes such as deep tendon reflexes. Give noxious stimulation at multiple spots on each limb. And with the legs as well, 
Noxious stimulation typically at the great toe, at the nail bed, and medially on the leg as well. You can see a Babinski response, Babinski sign. You can see an undulating toe. You can see triple flexion. Those are all acceptable in brain death. Okay, so there's no movement uh, in any extremity to noxious stimulation. That concludes the, uh, this portion of the brain death evaluation prior to doing apnea testing.